Back in April of 2022, the Microsoft Threat Intelligence team reported on a family of malware known as Tarask that uses scheduled tasks for defense evasions. This particular family of malware is supposedly used by a state-sponsored threat actor and has a few interesting components to remain hidden when someone is investigating scheduled tasks. Today, we're going to look a little bit more at the techniques used by this family of malware to remain undetected and how someone could go about creating a scheduled task that isn't shown to the end user and is hidden from tools such as auto runs. Then we'll look at how we can find something that has done this particular thing. And then once again, how to hide it from that particular technique. Before we can talk about any kind of hiding techniques, we have to understand what a scheduled task actually is. So a scheduled task is visible within the task scheduler on Windows. This has a number of conditions that are set up that if those conditions, also known as triggers, are met, something will run. Whether that's an application, a batch file, some sort of script, this is what is going to be triggered when those trigger conditions are met. Now, these scheduled tasks have names that define them as well as components to say whether they are ready, running, active or not. So let's take a look at what we could do creating a scheduled task. One of the misconceived conceptions is that the scheduled tasks on Windows are located within the System32 tasks directory. However, these are really only XML formats that are representing the tasks themselves upon creation. They're actually incredibly useless. They can be removed and have no impact on the scheduled task themselves, but they are the most legible for humans to be able to read. For example, this OneDrive standalone update, we can open this with something like Notepad++ and we can begin to see that it is valid XML that defines a lot of conditions. This executable command will be run if a particular condition is met. Those conditions are defined within the XML file itself. So let's take a look at how this works. We're gonna create a basic task. In this particular case, we will name this task Cyber Ryu, or Cyber Raiju, depending on how you read that. What we wanna do is maybe trigger it when I log on. What I want to do is a program to start, and we're just gonna make this program something fairly rudimentary. Maybe, look, I hate to be cliche, but maybe calc.exe. So let's just make it calc.exe. So at the logon of the user Sparky Barry, it's going to run the calculator. Cool. So we hit finish and you'll notice straight away, we now have a task file that's been created. This has the XML that defined that particular task, including when it was registered, the author and what it is set to run. But if I delete this file, the task remains. The file is no more. And if I refresh my view, it's still there on disk. It's still going to run even if I log off and log back on. Now this is because it's actually being created within the Windows registry. So if I use a tool in this particular case, I'm going to use NERCMD's tool, basically the reason why I'm doing this is because I can't modify these particular registry keys unless I have system level privileges. So even a local administrator can't do this unless they've elevated themselves with a system level token. So I'm going to open up registry edit and I am running this now with system level privileges. So the registry key I want to be looking for is within HKEY local machine, also known as HKLM. Now I want to look within the software hive. I am looking at Microsoft. I am looking at Windows NT, current version. And as we go down, we want to find schedule, schedule here. And now we actually have stuff such as task cache. And this has tasks and tree. Now these sub keys within task cache are what define 
our particular scheduled tasks. So you can see in tree, there is this Cyber Ryu task set up. This has an ID, an index, and a service descriptor, an SD key. And the ID is going to point, so this 310E value is going to point to a scheduled task under task cache. So this is that three, ooh, I've forgotten what it was called. Let's just see if we can find it now. There, it's this one here. So this is the scheduled task that we have created. So this particular registry key and the other particular registry are actually what's running the scheduled task, not the XML file that's sitting in the task directory. So one of the things that I really want to do is export this particular key. And let's just call this one uh, tasks. And we'll just dump it uh, in Barry's desktop for now. We'll just call it tasks. And now I want to go back to the other registry keys, CyberRayu, because we need both of them to function. So let's export this key and we'll name this one task cache or tree. Yeah, let's call it tree. So we've named that one tree now. The tactic used by this particular family of malware is that it is removing the service descriptor that is going to be containing the permissions on whether the scheduled task can be seen, modified, etc. So if I just straight out go and delete that particular key, now if I go back to something like the task scheduler and I refresh, it is gone. The scheduled task will still run except it is not shown on disk anymore. Now, we can go and use tools such as auto runs and confirm that that is, let's see if we can just fire it up from here, auto runs, let's look at the scheduled tasks and it's not there. It's still checking, finding everything. So it says now the, the scanning is almost done. The scheduled task scanning is now done. And you can see it's not shown at all, even though the scheduled task is still there. Don't believe me? I'll show you. I'll log on and we'll see what happens. But first, let's look at ways that we can detect this. So if we have something like PowerShell open, one of the things that we could do is scan the registry and look for any scheduled task that doesn't have a service descriptor. So in this particular case, the script I'm using is get child item, the alias is GCI. I'm looking in the registry objects and I am looking for that task cache tree. I'm recursively looking through this and I'm using force to get access to everything, even if the permissions have been modified. And then I'm looking to see if any of the properties contain the value SD. And you can see that one object came back, the scheduled task. So that's one way that we can see this. However, there is still a bit of a problem because what would happen if I said, okay, let's create a binary value. I'm going to call this SD, but I'm just not going to give it a value. Now, if I look at the scheduled task, let's kick this off this refresh. Let's kick off this action view. Let's, let's kick off a refresh. It's still not there, right? It still hasn't been found. But if I run that script, now nothing comes up. So we'd have to be looking at the actual values of the SD itself, because the key can be there, but just not have anything in it. And now we're not gonna find it, drats. But let's actually prove that this will still trigger, right? This scheduled task is still going to run. So let's, let's go out and let's do a few other things as well. So let's sign back in as Barry. Okay, we're signed in and you can see straight away calc ran so the calculator ran the scheduled task is still there but we can't see it it's sitting in the registry hidden okay so let's go back and get back into reg edit with our administrator rights or our system level rights i should say so cyber ryu has this service descriptor that has zero value and i want to show that we could actually create this scheduled task without anything else. So we've backed up these two registry keys, right? What if those registry keys are the only thing that exists? Let's do modify binary data and let's copy all of this, fingers crossed. 
and let's do modify binary data. Okay, so I've modified the binary data now within that scheduled task. So it should ideally, if we refresh this, yeah, okay. So it's back now and we can see the scheduled task. Let's delete this, straight up delete the scheduled task and it's gone. So now if we refresh all of our keys, right, the task is gone. It's no longer gonna run at startup. However, we do have these particular registry keys. So one of the things that we could do is from those backed up registry keys, we could actually recreate the scheduled task without using any tools like the EXC scheduled task binary, without using the task scheduler, we could actually go in and get these particular registries back. So let's give it a shot. Regedit once more, we've still got it open. And what we're just gonna do is import, that's fine. We're gonna go to the desktop of our particular user and we're gonna import tasks back. So now that has been imported back in, but it's not tied to tree yet. So if we refresh, nothing shows. Let's now add back in the other one. We're gonna add in tree and we have the scheduled task back. So now once again, without having to actually create anything, this is a scheduled task that's created. So just directly modifying the registry, you can create these scheduled tasks without using any kind of suspicious tooling. But let's see what happens if we try to do something a little bit different. So we did the trees registry key was the last one that we imported. Let's see if we actually just delete the task. So this is the 3180. If we go to 3180, we've got the task here and we delete this registry key. It's gone. And now we refresh. You can see the selected task cyber array no longer exists. Okay, refresh. That seems to pop up every single time because what's happening is the task scheduler is trying to identify that particular task is still being registered. However, the problem is that it's no longer there. So you get the selected task no longer exists to see it, click refresh. And I'm doing that. Every time I click refresh, I get that message. And that's because the other registry key hasn't been deleted. So something to keep in mind there as well. But let's go and once again, try something a little bit different. Let's import the key back. Let's put the task key back in. We refresh and the task is back. Now let's try to check out the permissions on this registry key. So in this particular case, I need to find the, the task here. Let's change the permissions on this so that we actually can't read it. So if we change it, so administrators can't read the key, but system can, okay. What's gonna happen now? So we're looking through it. We can't really see the task anymore. And we refresh this. The task scheduler service is not available and it will attempt to reconnect to it. What, what, what exactly does that mean? The task scheduler service is still here. We have something we can't read and it says it's unavailable. Let's see what happens if we log off and back on. So we're logging on again, nothing, it doesn't trigger. The task is still there, but it's the registry key isn't able to be read that is triggering it. However, other scheduled tasks still are. A Little bit interesting, right? So if we run this as administrator, once again, it just says the task scheduler service is not available. So something has broken by us doing that. So this is, a bit of a demonstration on scheduled tasks, their intricacies, and how they apply to one another in the context of remaining hidden on a particular endpoint when you're trying to persist. So let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts down below.